Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and whether you're a kid or like me, just a kid at heart, we all get excited for dessert. Well, today I'm gonna get my kitchen churning with a perfect dessert, ice cream and other frozen treats. But first, I gotta head to Abercorn Antique Village to find some things from the past to help me out with the present. And then next, I'm gonna churn y'all out a lemon and pineapple sherbet that's been around since the turn of the last century. And after that, it's a classic frozen Waldorf salad. And then last but not least, I'm gonna whip y'all up the sweetest orange ice cream cups that are perfect for serving anytime. So y'all grab your spoon and your favorite topping, cause we're all screaming for ice cream. Well, guess what, y'all? I'm doing my second favorite thing in the whole wide world. I'm going antique shopping, but don't worry, it has to do with food. So y'all hop in and come with me. We're going to one of my favorite shops. I love antiquing. For me, it's like taking a trip down memory lane. I'm constantly looking for antique items for my home or either the restaurant. And I think it started maybe when my grandmother gave me her old spatula, and you've probably seen me even cook with it on my show. And you know, that's also how I find some of my cast iron pots that I just can't live without. And you know, it's a real treat to find something rare when you're out there antiquing, like this old fashioned ice cream maker. In today's time though, I make frozen treats at home with my electric ice cream maker because it saves me a whole lot of time. But I have to tell you, it's hard to pass up this little beauty, even if I'm going to use it just to decorate my kitchen. I remember my mama having these beautiful little dessert cups and these pretty little spoons that she served her ice cream with. And lucky for me, I found some at the antique shop today. But when you're gonna use them, you'll wanna make sure that you clean them up real, real good. And if you're buying fragile antiques, like glass, you wanna make sure that they're not chipped or cracked. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I think I'm ready to start churning. I couldn't believe today when I walked into Abercorn Antiques that Terry had this old ice cream churn. It just took me right back to my childhood. This is what we actually used to make our ice cream when I was, mm, gosh, a youngster, 10 or 12 years old. This kind of machine, though, just gives you like pop arms because that, this is how we would churn it. But I'm gonna show y'all later on how we can have our ice cream without having to do all that churning because we're gonna use electricity. Well, the first thing I wanna make for y'all is just a Waldorf salad, but I renamed it Golda's Frozen Waldorf Salad. It's very nutritious, pretty, and colorful, and it's very simple to put together. We're gonna start with some lemon juice and some pineapple juice, and some sugar, and just a pinch of salt. Now we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes until it just gets thick. And then we're gonna put this aside and let it cool for a few minutes. And I already have some ready for us right here that's cooled off, and you can see it's gotten nice and thick. Now all we're gonna do to this is add some fresh whipped cream. And I wanna tell y'all who Golda is. She was actually my Uncle George's mother. From the time I remember as a child, she was totally bedridden. She was an invalid from arthritis. And I used to love to go over there and sit on the foot of Golda's bed and she would tell me all kind of stories but my Aunt Peggy used to tell me about this wonderful frozen salad that Golda would make. So my Aunt Peggy didn't have the recipe, but I just talked to my Aunt Peggy and talked to my Aunt Peggy until I could formulate this and put it to use. All right, now I have folded in the whipped cream into our syrup. Now I'm just gonna toss in apples because apples are the main ingredient and some diced celery and some miniature marshmallows. 
The kids love those. Some split grapes, and I do recommend you using a seedless grape and some crushed pineapple. And these are walnuts, and you can use your favorite nut. You could actually use a macadamia nut. I love those. So we're just gonna fold that all together. Look how pretty that looks, all your different colors. I just love when you bite into it and all the fruits are frozen. It's just really, really good. All right, now all I'm gonna do is put it into my container Kind of looks like heavenly hash almost. All right, now I'm just gonna cover this with some plastic wrap and pop this into the freezer. And we're gonna let it sit until it's completely frozen all the way through. Okay, and that's ready to go. And now we're gonna move on to the thing that's got me swallowing hard and real excited, and that's a lemon pineapple sherbet. Now, I'm starting with a 14-ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. I'm adding two cups of sugar and a 20-ounce can of crushed pineapple. And we're just going to fold that pineapple into our condensed milk. All right, now I'm going to add a cup of lemon juice. And now I'm going to add two quarts of milk. This is gonna be delicious. Okay, so we've got everything mixed up. Now I'm gonna show you how to load your churn into your ice cream maker. I showed y'all the hand cranked one earlier. Thank goodness for Benjamin Franklin and electricity. Now I've taken out my churn and I'm gonna put my ice cream into this. Your ice cream, as it hardens, it's actually gonna expand. All right, so we're gonna put that into our ice cream bucket, and then we're gonna put our top on it. We're fixing to start layering our ice along with our ice cream salt. And you can't use regular salt for this. You have to use ice cream salt. Now I'm gonna take some ice and I'm gonna spread it around. And we're actually gonna use like three parts ice to one part salt, so it takes a good bit. And then I'm gonna come in here, just put a layer of salt completely on top of that layer of ice. All right, and we're gonna keep doing that until we've got it filled with our ice and our salt. All right. Now we've got this filled up with our ice and the last thing going on will be another nice layer of salt. Now we've got our, our ice and our salt packed in there good. Now all we're gonna do is place our motor. Now when I make my ice cream, when I churn homemade ice cream, I let it churn in the sink because as my ice melts, you wanna pour your water off. It's gonna need to churn for probably about 30 minutes. And when your ice cream or your sherbet is almost ready, you'll actually hear your motor beginning to labor. And if it does that, go directly and unplug it because you don't want your motor to burn up on you. Next, I'm gonna be finishing up that luscious lemon and pineapple sherbet and serving up our frozen Waldorf salad. So y'all stick around. Now before I finish up with the sherbet, I want to show you all these little ice cream cake pops. I did them earlier because I had a feeling I wasn't going to have time for them. So I started these by making just a regular box cake mix in this special little baking tray. And then once they were done and cooled, I just put the popsicle sticks through the bottom of it and then I frosted them with ice cream. And once they were frosted, I rolled them in nuts and then I threw them back in the freezer to firm up. You're going to love this little quick and easy recipe, and the kids are going to have a fit over them. All right, I want to show you how my dear, sweet, beautiful mother 
packed our ice cream to ripen when I was a little girl. Oh, <laughs> you see that hole? <laughs> you see that hole right there where that water's coming out? That's why I like to make my ice cream in the sink. All right, now we're gonna take our motor off. We're gonna just slip it off. Get a paper towel and make sure I get all that salt away from there because I don't want that falling in our sherbet. And I told you how it was gonna expand. And look at there. Oh, it looks so delicious. I can't hardly wait. Now, the first thing we wanna do is remove our dasher. And my mother would always take out the dasher and put it in a bowl. And my little brother Bubba and I'd fight over it because we just loved licking those dashers. All right, so we're gonna get our ice cream back in there and we're gonna put back on our top. And you can see that the dasher is what filled up our hole. So now we're gonna have to go to a little piece that they include in your ice cream maker. When I was a girl, it was actually a cork. And I see now it's some type of rubber plug. So we're gonna push that down in there. All right, now we're gonna pack it down again with more ice. and more salt. We want to bring it almost all the way back up to the top. And we're going to cover it with that other layer of rock salt. Maybe one more scoop. And now I want to share with y'all how my mama protected and covered our ice cream. She always covered it with old newspapers and kind of mashed that down in there. And then she would cover it with towels. And now we're gonna just shove this aside for about an hour and let it ripen. So while I'm waiting on that to ripen, I think I wanna slip over here and check on our Waldorf salad and see how that's doing. And maybe it's ready for a taste. It feels frozen. It looks frozen. I'm just gonna cut me a little plug out of here. You know, it might be a good idea to take this out and maybe let it sit on the counter for five or 10 minutes. It might be easier for you to, to work with. I think I'm gonna just stab him. There he comes. He's coming out. Can you see all the colors? The apple and the grapes and the celery. Mm, it's delicious. And Golda, we still miss you after all these years. Mmm, it's yummy. I'm gonna take a quick break, clean up a little bit, and when you come back, we're gonna taste ice cream. Oh, look at this pretty orange. And what we're fixing to do with these wonderful little oranges is we're gonna make orange ice cream cups. You can use different kinds of oranges for your cups. I love this blood orange. They're tasty and delicious. But for this one, I'm gonna use just a nice, fat, juicy navel orange. And we're gonna start by going in around the pith. I'm gonna just cut this across and we're gonna scoop out this wonderful, juicy orange. We don't have to remove all the pulp, but I do want to try to get all of the juice out so the juice won't dilute our ice cream. Now the fillings is very, very simple. We're going to use vanilla ice cream and I'm going to use an orange sherbet. 
Now I'm using, like I said, just a good premium vanilla ice cream. This is a perfect summer dessert. The fun part of this is you can do any kind of flavor that you want, although the orange sherbet and the vanilla ice cream is wonderful. It kind of gives you a flavor of that old dream sickle that we used to eat when we were children. All right, now to this, I'm gonna add the pulp that I removed from the oranges, which is gonna give it a little texture in there. And I've already pre-measured my orange liqueur, so I wouldn't be tempted to put too much. I love that stuff. It's just wonderful for desserts. The liquids that we've added has made it really juicy. And now we're just gonna throw this back into the freezer and let it set up because you can't fill those cups if your ice cream is too liquidy. And I've got some right here that's firmed back up. We're just gonna turn these over and fill these up. If you're wanting to serve this yummy frozen dessert to the children, you'd need to leave out your orange liqueur. Slip these back into the freezer and let them set up again. And let them get all the way hard. Oh, they're gonna be just delicious. All right, now what I've been waiting for it's time to taste the sherbet. Or if not taste it, at least just look at it and let's see if it's ripened and firmed up. Okay, here we go. Oh. Oh my gracious. This looks so good. Oh, the dogs know I've got the ice cream ready. Listen to them. It's like they have a sixth sense. Oh, wow, kapow. All right, I'm just gonna put just a little zest on this. What I really wanna put on this is my lips. Oh, doesn't that look yummy? And do you just absolutely love this depression glass ice cream cup and saucer and spoon that I bought? Mmm. -hmm. This is magnificent. If you don't have an ice cream churn, get you one. It's worth the time. The flavor is so good and so homemade. Mmm. I wish you were here to taste it with me. And speaking of tasting, I want to check on our oranges and see if one of those are ready for us to sample. Hopefully they are. Oh. I think so. I think they're ready. Look how pretty that is. I think I'll put a little zest on it. Wonderful dessert that's just perfect to the end of a heavy meal. And the orange shells just make a beautiful container. It looks like you've been to a whole bunch of trouble. Mmm, this is just out of this world delicious. And y'all don't go anywhere because when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make those uh, frozen Waldorf salads very kid friendly. I'd like to share with y'all a few things that are a big hit with my family and me on ice cream day. If I'm gonna work in some fruit, all I do is buy a bag of either strawberries, blueberries, or peaches, and puree them in the blender and make a wonderful, refreshing coolie. Michael loves it when I make ice cream and the bowls to serve it in, and this is very easy to do. You just take an ordinary bowl, spray it, cover it with a plastic wrap, and then melt your chocolate, and you can use a semi-sweet, you can use an unsweetened, or you can use a white chocolate. Melt it, 
brush it onto your bowl and pop it into the freezer and then they'll slip right off and give you this wonderful bowl. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. It's truly got to be one of America's favorites. The family's just gonna love you for getting in the kitchen and making them some of these frozen treats. And you saw me earlier today making Golden's frozen Waldorf salad in this square pan. Well, if you wanna make your children a great healthy little snack, all you have to do is put them in paper lined muffin tins. When they come in from school, they can grab one out of the freezer, they don't need a dish, and it's just gonna be simply amazing. So until next time, America, I send you love and best dishes from my kitchen to yours.